In early 2021, the social media giant Instagram was facing a major problem. As Instagram grew, more and more of their users started reporting anxiety and depression. In fact, this became a very big problem for them. So what the tech giant did in order to curb these rising reports of anxiety and depression is they removed the feature of likes. They chose to suppress likes. Now, you may think that this is weird, but this prompts one question. Do these type of solutions actually solve the problems or are they just a slap a band or aid on an open wound type of solution? With the way social media has proliferated through society, it can be used as a tool for danger. With social media taking up more and more of our lives, with our lives being consumed by which apps we are on, by which people we know on those apps, by how many followers we have on those apps, by how many likes we get on every post we, 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 we share. With that being more central to who we are as, as people in the society, we've seen a lot more dangerous ideas and misinformation being spread openly and blatantly. With over 500 million active users, it's no wonder TikTok has become one of the most popular social media platforms out there. Horrifyingly, since the release of TikTok, there have been countless dangerous trends that have found their way into the mainstream media or into the, the mainstream world and into the minds of young kids, young impressionable youth. From eating Tide Pods to swallowing condoms full of water, teens and preteens have always found a way to try and get attention and clout. And with TikTok and Instagram being a major driving factor in this, we found a lot of really, really, really dangerous trends that we need to stop. And I'm going to highlight a couple of these for you in a second. Actually, I got a couple of these light down on my screen. Um, let's let's get into it. Let's get into a couple, actually. Number one, the blackout challenge, also referred to as the choke out challenge or the pass out challenge. This challenge encourages users to hold their breath until they pass out due to a lack of oxygen. Of course, I I don't have to tell you why your brain not getting any oxygen is bad for your body. In December of 2022, the family of a young 12-year-old boy called Tristan Casson died after attempting to do this challenge. In early August of 2022, a 12-year-old by the name of Archie Battersby in the UK actually passed away by doing this challenge as well, uh, apparently after fighting for their life uh, and life support. You can see how dangerous and how effective a tool of social media is and can be. If you have low oxygen, oxygen in the brain for over three minutes, it can result in brain damage. If you have low oxygen in the brain for over five minutes, it can result in death. This is something that is brutal, but this is something that is true and this is something that is affecting young people. A spokesperson from TikTok actually got a hold of People magazine uh, regarding a lot of this controversy, uh, stating this disturbing challenge which people seem to learn from other sources than TikTok long predates our platform and has never been a TikTok trend. They later added, we remain vigilant in our commitment to, our, to user safety and would immediately remove related content if found. Being somebody who cares about young people and being somebody who is an older brother, I don't want challenges like this out on TikTok. I don't want people spreading things like this. I don't want it out there. I don't want my siblings or anyone else coming across things like this and thinking it's a good idea. Number two, the infamous milk crates challenge. In this challenge, participants are tasked with climbing up milk crates. And these milk crates are laid in a pyramidal uh, pattern i guess or you know structure and you're supposed to walk on these and make it to the bottom without falling and while the result looks like something out of a super mario game in reality it results in a lot of broken bones a lot of torn ligaments and tendons and a lot of heartache you don't want to go through the video you're watching right now was released in mid august 2020 and this video shows a man climbing up uh, milk crates and right as he reaches the top he misses the step and you know he falls and <laughs> it's not I, I, I'm sorry it's not funny but at the same time it's it's extremely dangerous and anybody who thinks this is a good idea is not thinking straight or right in any in any form or fashion another video shows a woman in high heels beating the challenge as everybody looks on in amazement and honestly I did as well 
Tell me what you think in the comments. But all jokes aside, this is this is a pretty, pretty, pretty dangerous challenge. And please never, never attempt this ever in your life. This is um, pretty dangerous. If you directly search up Milk Crate Challenge on TikTok, it actually, the app shows you a message saying this phrase may be associated with behavior or consent that violates our guidelines. So at least they're trying to do something to keep others away from doing these dangerous trends. But you can see how something as dumb something as life-threatening as climbing up like milk crates you know can gain a lot of popularity very very quickly number three the tide pod challenge so if you don't know what a tide pod is it is basically laundry detergent and what a lot of teens are doing now or young people are doing is uh eating uh, the Tide Pods because they look like candy. They kind of look sweet, you know, they kind of look a bit like, um, you know, tasty. So I can see, I mean, I couldn't see, but like I, I would definitely not want anybody to ever, ever attempt this ever. That's why I'm making this video, right? But like, um, they decided to eat it. Detergent packets are designed to dissolve when wet. As soon as they touch your mouth, they're going to dissolve and release all types of chemicals into your mouth, into you. And, maybe into your body maybe it goes down into your throat and into you just don't want these chemicals in your body and they're very 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 dangerous there have been a reported six deaths from this uh and multiple thousands of calls to the pros the poison control um center uh in america of course but this is this is something crazy this is completely completely crazy this is out of this world crazy. So the question you may be asking yourself is, why do people even do this? And even though I'm not trying to uh, defend a lot of the bad behaviors, I'm giving you what psychology or at least what uh, we believe as far as academic uh, work goes as to why people participate in harmful trends like this. In recent years, online challenges have taken a standard format. You have a participant and you have somebody that is recording it. This is often a physical performance. So this could be, I don't know, swallowing a spoonful of uh, cinnamon. This could be swallowing a pod of laundry detergent or something as crazy the issue is once this video is published online the video takes up a life of its own not everybody out there will get your humor not everybody out there will understand that it's just a joke and not try it at home a lot of people in fact would want to do it themselves and so this video becomes further or bigger than you this video becomes an becomes way bigger than anything you could have grasped. So if I had to ask you why somebody would post a video on social media like that, you know, a milk crate challenge where they broke their leg, whatever, or, you know, whatever it is, you'd probably give me two reasons or two answers. Number one, clout and money. Or number one and two, clout and money. You probably tell me that they want some sort of attention. Maybe they want more followers. Maybe they want more friends. Maybe they want more shares, whatever the, whatever it is. And they probably want more money. Um, the shares, the followers, the likes, all of that equals money in some way. Essentially, it boils down to three main reasons. And we kind of went through the first reason already for clout for money this is the person that's doing it they doing it for clout and money the person that's filming it is doing it for clout and money as well number two and this is a reason this is something that a lot of people overlook but this is something that is quite real and this is the ability to tell people you hopped onto a trend or you hopped onto a wave quote unquote that you started early you were the person who pioneered it there's a sense of achievement there's a sense of confidence i made it i did this i was the person who started the cinnamon challenge or i made this milk crate challenge popular i'm the person who got a million views on this you know i'm the person who made it a popular thing and number three to feel a part of a group or a community you know i'm the guys that made it past the milk crate challenge you know i did the cinnamon challenge you know i can post it on my on my tiktok you know i can i can i I can become a part of that group of people that did the, the 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 trend the challenge and got followers and got love and validation from strangers i can promise you it is not worth it risking your life or doing anything dangerous on social media is not worth it for anybody who needs to hear that if you need to watch something like this again in order to get it into your head then it's okay first things first like most things in life social media is not all bad 
it actually has a lot of good to offer. The Public Health School of Harvard University actually found that regular use of social media leads to positive health outcomes. A very valuable skill to have in life is to be able to extract as much good from one thing as you can. And this is what I'm going to try to help you do with social media. The positive thing about developing a healthy relationship with social media is entirely dependent on how disciplined and willing you are to build that relationship. All right, so the best place to find the solution to a problem is at the root of it. What are the leading causes behind a poor relationship with social media? So after doing some research, these are the main three things that I found that lead to an unhealthy relationship with social media. Number one, self-comparison. Clinical psychologist from New York, Lauren Suero, says that self-comparison is the leading cause to a negative relationship with social media. And it's self-comparison of any kind. You can judge your life to be superior, inferior to that of whose social media account you're interacting with. That will lead to a negative self-perception nonetheless, and thus creating a negative and unhealthy relationship between you and social media. Two, emotional connection. Social media is something that is very gripping and people begin to attach their self-value to the numbers that they perceive on a screen. This leads to, once again, an unhealthy relationship with social media. Number three, time management. It's important to be able to regulate the amount of time you spend on your screen every single day. Going two, three hours a day scrolling, uh, looking at other people's lives and what celebrities are up to doesn't necessarily lead to the most positive health outcomes and does not necessarily lead to a healthy relationship with social media. How can we attack these three things and make social media work for you? One, the algorithm. Social medias are designed to keep you on your screen as much as possible. And how do they do that? They track what you like, what you interact with, what you're viewing, and will feed you more and more and more of that on your screen to make sure that you stay glued to it as long as possible. And we can use this to our benefit if, one, we change what we interact with. How does one change what they interact with? Social media is equipped with a whole bunch of tools to let you essentially tell them what it is that you want to see. Not only does your like mean a lot, but so does your view. There are these features such as pressing the not interested button on social media or see more posts like this. Let's say you want to get more into reading books. Interact with more book-related content. Go on social media. Number two, remind yourself to distinguish the difference between real life and social media. Social media is good at this one thing and that's showing the final product but it doesn't necessarily show you so much what is going into that you go on social media and you see that new fancy car that your friend just bought that that celebrity just bought their significant other and you start to think oh no why don't i have that fancy car social media will rarely show you the low points in people's lives the high points in people's lives it's not necessarily a representation of reality and if you begin to put yourself in if you begin to put yourself within that mix and identify yourself in relation to everything that you're seeing on social media, you begin to build that your reality around social media, you'll find yourself extremely miserable because social media is not a reflection of reality. Number three, very important, limit the amount of time you spend on social media per day. This is extremely vital to improving your relationship with social media because you will begin to interact with content that actually matters to you because each minute matters more. There was actually a study conducted that gave a group as much time to use their social media apps as, you know, as they desire and gave another group a 30 minute limit. The people whose screen time on social media was limited actually returned with more positive health related outcomes. And this is because they interacted with what it is that truly mattered to them, not what the algorithm throws at them and wants, not what the algorithm wants them to see.